Okay, so we're looking at part uh, two of that first video. So um, first thing I wanna talk about is the beating the test question here. This is one question, and this is a question that you're very likely to see on um, your state test. So this question that asks, which of the following equations have the correct solution? Select all that apply. One thing to keep in mind is anytime you see boxes on the left, rather than just circles. Um, it, those boxes are always gonna show up on select all that apply problem. So if you see the boxes, keep in mind that there's going to be more than one correct answer here. You have to check all the ones that are correct, okay? Cause it's gonna, there's gonna be more than one right answer. You have to make sure you pick all the right answers. Now in this problem, we have an equation and then a semicolon, and then the x uh, value. So the semicolon is just there to separate the two. And you can see that in all of them. You have the equation, the semicolon that separates it, and the x value that to plug in. You got the equation, the semicolon separates it, and the x value to plug in. Semicolon isn't really part of the equation. It's just there, to, again, to kind of create a barrier to sort of separate um, the equation and then the value to plug in. So we're looking to see which of these have a correct solution. So to determine if x equals seven is correct or not, we have to plug that seven in for the x. And if it works, then it works. But if it doesn't, then we then it doesn't. We don't we don't check the box then. So to see if it works, we have the equation two x plus five equal to nineteen. And again, we're using seven as x. We're going to check to see if that works. We're going to put seven in for the x and evaluate. So two times seven will be 14. And then 14 plus five, 14 plus five is 19 and 19 does equal 19. So that is actually true. So we're gonna go ahead and, and mark that one. That works. Um, let's look at the second one. The second one is three plus X plus two minus X, which equals 16. And we're going to check for x equal to 3. So we're going to put 3 in for all for both these x values. So we're going to have 3 plus 3 plus 2 minus 3 equal to 16. And then when I work this out, we get uh, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And 8 minus 3 is 5. So we end up with 5 equal to 16. That is false, that does not work, so we will not mark that box. We will not select that box. So the first one works, second one uh, doesn't work. Let's try the third one. Third one is x plus two over five equal to two, and we're checking eight. So we're gonna put eight in for the x. So if I put eight in for the x, we have eight plus two over five. So let's evaluate, eight plus two is 10, so that is the same thing as 10 over five uh, and equal to two. 10, 10 divided by five is two, so that's true. Two equals two, that does work. So you see, it's just plugging in the number and you can use a calculator if it helps, but I really encourage you to try and do this out a calculator as this would probably not be on the calculator part of the test. The fourth one, we have six equals two X minus eight and we're checking seven. So we're gonna plug the seven in. We have six equals to two times seven minus eight. So we do the multiplication first. Six equals two times seven is 14. Bring the eight down. 14 minus eight is six. Six does equal six, so that works as well. We're gonna check that off. And now we have one more to look at. So last one, 14 equals one third x plus five and we're checking 18. Um, one thing that's very important to keep in mind and this is going to apply for a lot of things in the future is when you see one third x that x is the same thing as just sitting in the numerator so one third x is the same as just one x divided by three so you can see the x is here is kind of written off on the side of the one third whereas here it's actually written in that fraction bar but they mean the exact same thing. I want you to keep in mind that this X or anything that you see off the side like that is part of the numerator as well. So that's gonna help me out if I think about it like that. If I write this instead of like one third X, I write it as one X over three because it's easier to plug in 18 in that sense because we have one times 18 over three. 
and then plus 5. So we're plugging in 18 where that x is. So we have 14 equals, well, 1 times 18 is 18. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. So that's 14 equal to 6 plus 5. 6 plus 5 is 11. 14 does not equal 11. So that's a false equation. So we will not check that box. Okay. So never true, sometimes true, or always true. Um, again, this is one that we used the uh, um, whiteboards for in class. But uh, we are going to just, I'll just go ahead and tell you the answers here. So the first one is never. Because again, 3x and 3x are the same number, no matter what. But one side has minus 12, the other side has plus 4, which means that they will ultimately, those numbers that are the same will then be different because you're doing different things to those numbers. So that's never true. Um, second one is sometimes true. And I know it's sometimes true just because 5x and 2x are completely different. Um, so if they're completely different, then you will see sometimes true on all of those circumstances. Now, the third one, let's go ahead and keep in mind that this is really 3x minus 12 because we have to distribute. And since 3x minus 12 and 3x minus 12 are exactly the same, that would be always true. No matter what x is, it will always be true because both the left side and the right side are already exactly the same thing. Um, the fourth one would be 2x minus 2, and this is negative 2x plus 6. Uh, I just kind of wrote these backwards, negative 2x and a positive 6. Now, this will be sometimes true because, again, 2x and negative 2x are not the same thing. So it will be a sometimes true problem. It's always going to be sometimes if the left side and the right side x's don't match. Like in this one, negative x and then 1 half x. Those do not match, so we'll have a sometimes true. It'll only have one solution. So sometimes true... This one, this one, and this one will only have one solution. You can work the equation out. You can solve the equation. But um, to find out what it actually is. But just for the sake of saying never, always, or sometimes, I can tell it's going to be sometimes. Just, just from that uh, different x values. Now, you got to be careful here because we have two x values on the same side. So you do have to combine those x values first. 2x plus 6x makes the left side 8x. And here you got to be careful as well. This will be 8x plus 4 plus 1. So when you simplify, the left side is 8x plus 5, and the right side is also 8x, because when you combine these, it's also plus 5. So since they're both 8x plus 5 and 8x plus 5, it's very similar to this problem. Since uh, they're both exactly the same, it'll be an always true. This one is 6x plus 1 equal to 6x plus 15. And since, again, these match, but the numbers beside them do not match, that is a never true. This one only has one x in it, period, so it'll be a sometimes true. You would just have to solve that equation for x. And here we have, I'm going to write it backwards, negative 2x plus 8. And this would be uh, negative x plus 6 plus 2. So you have negative 2x plus 8, and you'd have negative x plus 8. Um, this is going to be sometimes true because, again, the x's do not match. So whenever the x's do not match, it'll, it'll always be a sometimes answer. Okay, and then there's the homework problems as well. So that covers it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next section.